You see, a side of Instagram has become a platform that demonstrates how social media can really create a false perception of reality. And in some aspects, it has brought harm to a lot of people, especially kids. And so there are places such as r slash Instagram reality that are born to compare the Instagram post versus the reality. But on the flip side, people that unrealistically Photoshop or use filters mostly just want to present the best image of themselves to others. But the consequence is that it creates a never-ending cycle of toxicity. Moreover, when people unrealistically portray themselves online, it sometimes backfires. For instance, celebrities can be criticized a lot and for some odd reasons like not being truthful to their fans because they edited their photos. What is this? false advertising, and it even became trendy to expose celebrities that photoshopped their photos for a good period of time. And this is where the AI paper that I've been wanting to revisit comes in. FAL Detector, short for Detecting Photoshopped Faces by Scripting Photoshop, was published around September 2019, and it went viral. Some may say it became a tool for witch hunt, but at the very least, it has the ability to expose people who have photoshopped their faces not that it is always accurate. To be more precise, FAL Detector was trained to detect facial warping. It is also one of the most common ways to edit faces in Photoshop where you literally just pull their faces. And this AI has two functions. One is determining the likelihood of a face being photoshopped and another one is evaluating the region that may be photoshopped and also producing an unwarped face based on the suspicion, which is really cool. So in order to train this AI, the author used a dataset of images and for every image in the dataset, it. it is passed through an algorithm to randomly warp the faces, which means if the starting dataset has 100,000 images, after randomly warping each of the faces 10 times, the dataset will now have 1 million training data to use. But would I say this AI is trained to perfection? Not really. Well, my argument is not because this AI's architecture is not precise enough or that the training dataset is not a correct representation of the real world photoshopping. It is more of how taking photos itself can vary based on the machine specs you choose to use and many other factors that I am not mentioning in this video. I think most of you already know how there is an adjustable thing on a camera called focal length, and the smaller the focal length, the better someone looks. So let's say someone uses a different focal length to take their photos. It seems that my results show the smaller the focal length, the more likely the image would be predicted a higher percentage of being photoshopped. Well, of course, these images were never edited in Photoshop. It is the focal length that changes how the same face can look differently and still be suspected of being photoshopped photoshopped and have regions of jaws being predicted as photoshopped. Well then, which one of these faces would you say is the most accurate representation of the person? They all are, but just presented at a different focal lengths. Okay, I think the problem lies in the fact that to evaluate something so delicate like photoshopped faces, it is definitely a much more difficult task than most people would expect it to be. It is not just looking around the pixels and guessing if they were stretched or not. There is more than one factor that can affect how a face can look like in a 2D environment. So to create an AI or a tool that can fully detect what is actually being photoshopped or if it is just how it looks like being taken on the given camera or machine, is actually kind of hard. And don't get easily fooled by a simple heat map. It may look like it's showing the region that's like, oh, it is photoshopped heavily or lightly. Well, that is not necessarily the entire truth. But most importantly, you also need to refer to the value of how likely this image is being photoshopped too. Like this image is being predicted a probability of 99.27% that is photoshopped. But look how lightly the heat map was drawn. So don't just go by looking at the visualization. Like the other day, I saw an old video demonstrating FAL detector on a phone app and it creates a heat map for the results of the detection. A lot of people may just jump to the conclusion, oh, these are the regions that are heavily being photoshopped. Well, no, we have been given absolutely zero context. It might as well be a detector of a region where the jaw exists. If you don't believe me, let me run the same exact image that video has. My low resolution of the same image produces a probability of 0.22 of the image being photoshopped, and the 4K image that I found online produces a probability of 24.84 percent of being photoshopped, while the heat map region is totally off from what the video shows. 
What I am trying to say here is that don't interpret the results immediately in a way that your mind wants to believe. Like, oh, Kim Kardashian definitely photoshopped herself and this heat map just shows how she is shamelessly doing so. Don't do that. Because, first, the result might not be accurate, and second, the result might not provide a full view like the probability of this image being photoshopped is not even being told. At the end of the day, just be a bit more perceptive. Take everything with a grain of salt and don't jump to conclusions. This AI is not particularly good or bad or toxic, it is just a rather interesting research someone has decided to put their time into, so the rest of us can enjoy and discuss or even learn about the knowledge the author has gathered through this research paper that is shared with all of us for free. If you want to play around with this AI, I'll link my installation tutorial down in the description. And this video is sponsored by Infinite Red. Infinite Red Consulting handles your mobile, web, and AI needs. If you are looking for someone to build your app, visit with the link down in the description. If you have any questions about the installation or want to share your results or thoughts, you can head over to my Discord channel. I am quite active there and big shout out to mark schwinn and many other patreons that support my work through patreon and lastly follow me on twitter if you haven't and i'll see you all in the next one